Welcome in to another episode of Carp's Corner. This could be the last one here, kicking off before Notre Dame, Ohio State, 7.30, Saturday night in the horseshoe. Going to give you some things to watch for, some of the three key matchups, some of the stuff that is going to be important for the Buckeyes um, and understanding exactly what they need to ultimately uh, get done. Uh, so I'm going to start off with this. We're going to get right to it. You know, the, the three matchups that you're going to need to really keep an eye on. Number one, we take a look at Notre Dame's offensive line versus OSU's front. Now, we heard Larry Johnson come out and say that he thinks he can rotate up to 12 guys. Now, that's ambitious. Rotating 12 guys is a heck of a lot of dudes. I don't know if you're going to be able to fit 12 guys into that rotation, uh, but it's going to be important because Notre Dame is going to try to come out, as we heard Marcus Freeman say, and run the football. They want to control the tempo of this game, run the football, slow it down, not put their defense in bad situations and not allow that Ohio State offense to get going. So Notre Dame, they've got an experienced offensive line. They've got veterans up there. They're big. They're physical. That's one of the things that they've done a great job with is really developing this offensive line. So you start looking at some of these guys, you know, uh, Zach Harrison, Mike Hall, Sawyer, um, you know, the interior guys as well, Tyleek Williams. I mean, you're going to have, uh, a number of guys up there that they're going to be able to slide through just to name a couple, um, but they're going to have to do a terrific job. And then the second part of that front is the linebackers with steel chambers, Tommy Eichenberg running the alleys and then getting the safeties into the mix when you need to, but you're going to have to be able to stop that surge up front. And that's going to be that Notre Dame offensive line that they're going to lean on and try to run the football. It's going to be a very Jim Trussell is Jim Trussell-esque type of game. Chris Tyree, one of their running backs, they're going to be looking to him to really carry the mail. And though we're going to cycle a number of guys uh, through there in the backfield as well. Um, the second matchup you really need to watch for, that Notre Dame pass rush against Ohio State's, uh, against Ohio State throwing the football. And what they're, what they're going to be able to do. This Ohio State offensive line, uh, Dewan Jones, uh, Paris Campbell, very talented. Obviously, you have a tight end on the outside and Cade Stover, who's good. Isaiah Foskey, I've talked about this. or uh, Foskey talked about this. Very, very talented player. 11 sacks last year. Six uh, forced fumbles. Led the nation there. Really, really good pass rusher. He's a dude that you could pluck off of this team and maybe throw and throw an Ohio State's defensive line, and he would fit. Very, very good player. And so they're going to move him around. He plays a lot to the boundary, the short side of the field. And so whoever the tackle is to that side, whether it's the right or left, whether it's Joe, uh, whether it's big Thanos over there, where it's Par Paris Johnson, look for those guys to be locked up on him. Also, let's not forget. They're probably going to keep Cade Stover in when they need to, they'll chip with him. They'll utilize him in the run game to help slow down that pass rush run right at Foskey, as we talked about earlier. Uh, but that Notre Dame fat pass rush is going to be a key matchup against the Ohio state offensive line. And so if you're seeing the theme here, this game, I believe, is going to be built in the trenches. And then I think the last critical matchup, the last big piece that you're going to be looking at here is Brandon Joseph, the safety, transferred in from Northwestern, very, very talented player, probably one of the best uh, safeties you're going to find in college football this year. And he's played against Ohio State before. Like I said, he played at Northwestern. Um, it's going to be him. You'll have to look at him versus C.J. Stroud. And, you know, there's wide receivers. His ability to patrol the middle, to be able to get them in and out of coverages, to understand and identify what's happening, to make sure that he doesn't take the bait. C.J. Stroud's doing a much better job of manipulating the field with his eyes. And so it's going to be up to Brandon Joseph to be back there leading that secondary. And so him versus C.J. Stroud, the receivers, especially inside the game within a game, that's going to be something else that's going to be interesting to keep an eye on to see how that kind of develops throughout the course of the game. Now we'll take a look at the two quarterbacks as well. Obviously, C.J. Stroud, not, not a huge runner. I think if the opportunity to run is there, Notre Dame plays a lot of two-man, I can see him pulling it down and running it. I think that that's an evolution that he's made in his game over the last – season is hey i'm not a runner but neither is aaron Rodgers, neither is tom brady but when these guys have the opportunity to run and go pick up 12 to 15 yards and they're going to give it to you for free you take it so if notre dame does that i could see him running but it's going to be done a lot with his arms and he's obviously going to be spreading the ball around trying to have success that way i wouldn't be surprised if they take some shots early in the game i know these guys are hungry for it 
The receivers are looking really good, and I couldn't even tell you who the first three guys will be to trot out there. Jackson Smith and Jigga will be it will be one of them. But you've got Emeka Ibuka, you've got Julian Fleming, you've got Marvin Harrison Jr. All of those guys have played really well, and I know Hartline is going to try to roll them in as much as he possibly can to give them opportunities on the field. Even Jaden Ballard, I think you're going to get a chance to see him in there and take, try to take the top off the defenses. He's had a pretty good camp. But Julian Fleming as well. Those guys will all play big for C.J. Stroud, but if they keep him clean, it'll be a long night for the Notre Dame secondary because C.J. watching him in seven-on-seven seven has been as efficient as anyone I've ever seen during a training camp. Now, opposite of that, Buckner, quarterback for Notre Dame, first full season as a starter, played some last year. He's, a, he's an athlete. He can move around, and it wouldn't surprise me if they get him heavily involved in the run game. We always talk about running, being with the running backs more of a pro style, but I think this can be a little bit more of an Urban Meyer style offensive game where you get the quarterback involved a lot if you're Notre Dame. And I know Marcus Freeman's going to want to do that to keep this defense from being too aggressive. You know, some of the zone read stuff, the RPO stuff, to try to put guys in situations where they're in a bind, to put Eichenberg and Steel Chambers in a bind, to make sure you're challenging those ends. When it's the safety coming down, whether it's you know McAllister, Hickman, Proctor, whoever is in the game, making sure Court Williams, that those guys are on their P's and Q's and you have all of your responsibilities covered. And so the quarterback run will help you do that. Plus, the quarterback run gives you an extra man in the box. Your coaches talk about all the time. That's your that's your extra hat because now you have another guy that can block and the quarterback being the runner, there you go, and the numbers begin to change. So you have to have guys that beat blocks, get penetration, and be able to have success. And so I look at this, the pathway – for Notre Dame to victory. Have to start fast, have long drives, force some turnovers from Ohio State, pressure C.J. Stroud, make sure they're impatient, and really dictate the tempo of the game, control field position, and limit Ohio State's big plays. Sounds pretty easy. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to continue to run against Ohio State's front consistently. It'll be tough to get pressure on Stroud. And I feel like Ryan Day is great at adjusting to how the game's ultimately going to be played and being able to go out there and have success uh, by changing it up and making those adjustments that you like to see. He does it every year. He does it every game. And I think he's really, really, really solid at it. And so Notre Dame's path to victory, like it's going to be heavily reliant on the Ohio State's offense getting flustered and Notre Dame possessing the ball for long periods of time. I think for Notre Dame to win, they're going to have to have a time of possession of probably 35 to 36 minutes and really dominate it. If they get that, then you have to start wondering. If Ohio State is minus two in turnovers, then you then you start wondering. And if they're getting hammered in field position, well, that's kind of the trifecta that Notre Dame needs to be able to win this game the way that they're trying to play it. A um, couple notes for Ohio State, as I mentioned. Got to stop the run hammer the run. Buckner's going to be heavily involved in the run, so he's going to be a big piece of it. Um, controlling your emotions throughout the long day. It's the opening game of the season. You're going to look out the window at the Blackwell. You're going to see people tailgating, music being played, all kinds of things, pomp and circumstance going on. You've got to find a way to control the emotions and keep it level throughout the day, very steady, so it slowly builds ultimately to a boil come Saturday at 7.30. So that is big. And for a young team, that can be hard. An opening game, that can be hard because you don't have the experience. There's a lot of nervous energy Energy that's going to be pent up. There's going to be good games on during the day when you start looking at Utah and Florida. You start looking at Cincinnati, Arkansas. You start looking at Georgia and Oregon. Like There's other games you're going to be on. And so the, the tough test for a player is to watch those games and not get emotionally invested in them. Watch them, understand that you know, some of those games may have repercussions for you down the line, but the most important thing for you to do is to take care of your stuff. So you study your notes, you have the game on, you're not cry, you know, getting upset about calls and this play and that play, which all former players tend to do. You relax, you chill out, and you just be a fan and just kind of watch objectively for a while. And then uh, the last piece of it, for the th another keys for Ohio State, is going to be to, you know, to, to harness that energy. Once you get out on the field, I believe the fans are going to be in it. They're going to be in a big way. And so with that, you're going to need to try to harness that energy from the stands. 
especially on the defensive side of the ball. I've hammered this all week. Bring it in. Really lean into it. Make sure that you have that energy behind you and that you're ready to go and that all all the all 100,000 plus people in the stadium feel the confidence you have especially on defense and use that energy use your home field advantage those are the things that are going to be really really big and then lastly I'll leave you with this and this isn't going to be you know a crazy long episode I'm talking 10 15 minutes got a huge busy weekend plan but Ohio State has only played Notre Dame, I believe, six times. Notre Dame won the first two. Ohio State has won the last four, last two bowl games, the prior two, 95-96. So 1996 was the last time that these teams played. I mean, we're talking tw- over 25 years. So you don't get to see it a lot. And you look at all the plays that have happened and the iconic picture of Eddie George pulling away, um, you know, nine Notre Dame defenders chasing him. You are pulling away in the middle of the field. And it's, you know, an iconic image that people see and they have it immortalized in offices everywhere. I think Eddie even has it hanging in his office, um, you know, down in, down in Nashville. But my favorite play of the Ohio State Notre Dame series that I had growing up, the 95, 96 was, you know, Terry Glenn after Sean, uh, after Sean Springs interception, Ohio State's 17, 18 yard line. And Terry Glenn, they're interviewing, viewing Regis Philbin on the sideline. Terry Glenn runs down, runs about a 10 to 12 yard curl, catches it, and just splits the safety. The linebacker doesn't get enough depth. They're playing like a cover three single high. He splits the safety and corner and peels off about 75 yards for a touchdown. I sat there and watched it, and I was I was incredibly proud. They talk about all the speed, this and that, speed all over the place. Terry Glenn's one of the fastest dudes I've ever been around. And the guy that he outran was Alan Rossum. Now that might not be a household name to a ton of people. But he played about 13 years in the NFL, 14 years in the NFL. I actually played with him in Dallas in 2009. He became a kick return specialist. He ran a 10.0200 meters in high school when he was growing up. I believe he won the 55-meter indoor a couple times when he was at Notre Dame. Incredibly fast dude. And Terry Glenn pulled away from him like he was standing still and immortalized Terry Glenn. I mean, if you didn't know who he was before that game, at that point, you were put on alert, and it was on pace for a Bolitnikoff season. And I believe that that, as much as anything, immortalized him. So Alan Rossum, I always have to look it up. I forgot that I even played with the guy. I played with Terry in Dallas. You know, a couple of years later, out we bring in Alan. He was a special teams as our uh, return guy, and he could just flat haul, even at an older age. And Terry outran him and made him look like he was standing still. Those are the plays that make a big difference. And remember this, like, Great players play great in big games. And so we'll find out Saturday night at 7.30. Probably 7.35, 7.40 is the ball is kicked off. Foot hits ball. Ohio State, Notre Dame. The seventh matchup all time of two of the most story programs in college football. And it should be a good one. It should be a fun one. I like Ohio State 45-17. I think they just have too much. They pull away, and I think they'll be able to slow down that Notre Dame run game enough to really, really do some good work. And so that's it for this edition of Carp's Corner. Like I said, I appreciate it. Like, subscribe, comment, share with friends. I'm going to continue to push more stuff out. Next week, we'll start going over some more of the games um, throughout the weekend. This week, I said, we've got our 2002 reunion coming up, so I've got a lot of stuff. And to be able to get this out uh, before the game was impressive, and I was – Surprised I was even able even able to get it done. So thank you so much for all the support. Look forward to seeing you soon.